All right, in this section, we're going to get introductory into filters. Now, filters are kind of like the uh, Photoshop's special effect factory. There is a w number of things that we can do with filters, and one of the kind of the easiest uh, effects that we can create is to magically create a brushed metal look. A lot of people have, uh, really like the brushed metal look. Um, it's great for some of you guys out there, especially uh, the 3D animators or uh, texture artists that might need to texture one of your 3D models and need a brushed metal look. So I'm going to kind of walk you through on how to create that. We're going to go to the file, create a new image. And I'm simply going to use the default Photoshop size, which is 7 inches by 5 inches at a resolution of D, uh, 72, keeping it with the RGB uh, theme we've got going on. And I'm going to go ahead for now and leave the contents as white. So when I s click OK to that, <coughs> I'm presented with this, uh, this image plane. What I want to do is fill this with about, what do you think, 25 or 50% uh, gray there, Gump? I'm going to say probably about 25. Okay, 25% gray. As you can see over in the swatches here, if I hold my cursor over uh, the swatch long enough, I can actually get a number, a percentage of what kind of gray from all the way white to all the way black and everywhere in between. So I'm going to go ahead and look for the 25% gray, sample that, and then use my paint bucket to fill in with 25% gray. Cool? From here, we need something that we can um, create that brushed metal look. So we're going to venture into the filters menu here, and you can see that we have lots of different types of filters. For the artistic, lots of different things that we can do for blurring, creating brush strokes, um, distorting uh, pixels. I'm going to go straight to the noise. What I, I want to like do. I like noise. The noisier the better. The buddy. noisier the better. If you, it's too loud, you're too old. So crank it up <laughs> and add the noise. <laughs> yeah, well, it's <laughs> like an old Ozzy concert. <laughs> Rock and it's roll. too loud, you're too old. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've got is my add noise dialog box here. And um, what I have here is, is it's actually just creating a bit of noise. Uh, random pixels inside my image. It's all it's doing. And I can increase or decrease the amount of noise. And I kind of like this around 50%. So I'm going to change this to about 50% noise here. And you can see the distribution is set to uniform and monochromatic. If I take off the monochromatic for a second just to see what you uh, get, you can see that it's, gener it's generating random red, green, and blue pixels. Okay, so that's uh, not exactly the effect we want for brushed metal, so I'm going to change this back to monochromatic. It is creating a uniform pattern here. If I change it to Gaussian, we get just a little bit more of a clumping of some of those pixels. I'm going to leave it on uniform so that things don't get too jumbled up for us. And at 50%, I'm going to say OK. This is going to be the basis for our metal. But uh, we need streaks, right? Brush metal is... Have uh, you guys ever seen those posters that you stare at, and they're black and white like that, and if yeah. you look at them all cross-eyed, they come up with something? Yeah, Gump's face is hidden inside <laughs> here, so stare look real carefully. really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see Ducky. Mm. I'm going to go back up to the filter, and in this, this time, I'm going to come down to the blur section... And in other um, tutorials, we, we've kind of seen the Gaussian blur or other sections. We've seen the Gaussian blur. I'm going to skip that and go straight to the motion blur. This creates a sweeping uh, effect or motion across, like wind has just blown all those pixels. See this dial here and the angle number? We can change the angle of uh, how those are swept across. I really do kind of like between about 35. 30 and 40, so I'm going to go ahead and just choose 40 for now. Actually, I'm going to choose 30 instead. <coughs> and you can see the distance of that blur, okay? The higher you go, the more windswept it looks, and the lower, of course, down to 1. There's hardly any blur at all. In doing this effect for a brushed metal look, you want to keep the distance kind of low. So maybe between 20 and 30 as well here. So somewhere around um, maybe 25 is probably okay. Nice round number. I'm going to say okay to that. I accidentally hit the enter on my uh, keyboard, which is just the same thing as sitting okay. And we see the effect that we've got. Now this is starting to look like that brushed metal, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it looks pretty close. Okay. It's not quite done yet. There's it's had a little color to it. 
You want to add a little color to it, yeah. kind of a rust color or something? No, let's go with like this crazy blue color, maybe just a little. You ever seen off, off the rust? Yeah. yeah, we'll throw some rust color in there. <laughs> blue. <laughs> okay, if we're going Rusty with Buzz blue. default. Uh, that's rusty that blue. Looks rust. <laughs> let's make metal. Quick, grab pink. That's right. <laughs> now here's a here's a thought. All right, you're about to uh, you're about to take a brush and just paint a real light rusty color over, right? Actually, I was thinking about just kind of adding a nice um, rust color to the whole entire image. I could go back through later on using a brush and kind of add uh, add to it. You know what? Let me. I'm just wondering if it might be good to put the rust on another layer so that you would get another l- level of control with its opacity and all from. It being on another layer. Certainly. There are many different ways to achieve the same effect. Um, no one way is better than another. As a matter of fact, you could uh, spend a lot of time creating the same effect using about 50 steps, or you could do the same thing in about 10 steps. I know, but here's, here's what I'm thinking, or here's what I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. If, we, if like rust is a different element from the base metal itself, and for those that are new out there, if we keep these pieces separated, then we still have our metal kind of by itself we have our amount of rust by itself so that if uh, let's say a director came in or a client and they said oh that's too rusty then you have control of that you know amount of rust on there okay let's try going with uh, with that I'm going to create a new layer above the background layer it's a blank layer right now Um, what I might want to try doing is grabbing my brush I'm going to go ahead and grab that kind of rusty uh, color kind of a burnt rust. I'm trying to hunt for a nice almost orange. So it's kind of a darkened rust. Now this effect is going to look like it's blowing up at first because Whoa. as I paint, it's, it's actually painting got. over this. My o- my opacity here is 5%. If I bump up this opacity a little bit, of course if I bump it up all the way, all I'm doing is painting down on that layer. I'm going to kind of just paint some rusty spots just to kind of mess with the color a little bit here using a big brush here and I'm going to drop the opacity of the layer down so that we can kind of see through that is that sort of the look you were looking for there Buzz? Um, maybe not quite so blotchy and localized like that okay I can switch yeah, between lighter. different brushes to uh, create smaller areas well, is there are there you any filters that we could apply to just the uh, that rust layer to break it up also uh, if you're gonna break it up you can go in and erase some of the areas that are um, certainly to clump together. I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for, but uh, we can create that that rusted effect above there. Just kind of drag the mouse around and erase areas. But for having it on a on a separate layer, you can you have more control over that one in particular layer there, and try not to make anything kind of really round. And we were just using like the eraser brush. tool. Yeah, there. that's yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Now this, you you will probably have to play around with this for a while. Uh, drop a your while opacity here. on it down just a tad. Yeah, the opacity that. still is a little bit high there. Yeah, there so you we go. Just want to get the that's hint looking good. of color on that um, on that layer. Of course, we can use the dodge and burn tool as well to lighten and darken up areas on there to give it uh, a more natural look. And everything I'm, I'm just here is curious. pretty uniform. I'm just curious here. Are there filters? Uh, that we could apply any type of artistic filters or anything like that that could have roughed it up some as well. That yes, would they break the the color up. Yeah, they just made it more. Um, well, let's just take a little gander. You know what? Maybe we should try. Um, I think if we just used like a a cloud, we could yeah, rough like up that a little bit more and kind of create some splotchy areas that might. Uh, That's true. Uh, the clouds are really the instructor cloud would be really here. Really good. Yeah, the clouds are Let cool me go idea. ahead. Uh, we've tried this with the brush. I'll do the this. Uh, take the brush, or, or excuse me, yeah, take the brush layer and just kind of just close it. Some. I'm going to turn yeah. the visibility off on that. Excellent. I'm going to create a new layer above that, and I'm going to introduce you to the render clouds layer. Awesome. Up in the filter, come down to render, and choose. We have either clouds or difference clouds. Now. 
the clouds is based on your foreground and background color. When I click clouds, it's going to create oh a, a yeah. random cool. uh -huh. kind of a cloudy look cool. based on your foreground and your background color. Now you can drop the opacity of that puppy. You can drop the really opacity, but sweet. you know what might really help this is if I had a black background instead. So let me undo that and grab black for my background. Choose that instead and run that filter again. Now notice inside your filter menu, every time you use a filter, Photoshop memorizes what the last filter you use and puts it right conveniently here as the first thing in the filters menu. Oh, very so nice. you can run that filter over and over and over again by using Control and F. So since it's already there, I'm going to choose filter and then the first thing, clouds. Now as I drop my opacity down, it's going to kind of break it up a little bit and add the highlights and the low lights to it as well. What if we... Uh I could also go in a little bit more there, Buzz, if you want me to. Bump up the... Con uh, the um, take that cloud level. Yeah. And I can adjust the levels a little bit for you. And it kind of... Of course, now I'd have to explain the, the levels tool a little bit. No, that's, o that's okay. They can just watch in this part. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm changing the uh, inputs and outputs of that particular layer so that we may add even more highlight and add more of a contrasty yeah. area between them. And when I drop the opacity now, it's a little bit more pronounced. Now the, uh, yeah, it's metal and fire. <laughs> 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 um, hmm. Drop that. How far down is that opacity now? It's at 30% yeah, right now. Yeah, drop that on down. Just kind of make it look light, lightly yeah, in there. Yeah, there we go. There you go. About 10% to uh, 20%. Yeah. Okay, I can certainly live with that. You know, we could probably spruce up this image by adding some light to it. Okay. Okay. Um, this next filter that I'm going to show you is... Uh, is rather large, but I'm going to go ahead. Back in the uh, render area, too, right? It's back in the render area, the same place you would find clouds and different clouds. Le lens flares, everybody's favorite um, popular. Now, now, let me ask this before you go into the lighting effects. Um, don't you want to put the lighting effect on the actual uh, background, or do you want to put it on the cloud layer? You know what? I think I see where you're going. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the background layer here gotcha. and select that so that it's actually applied to only this brushed metal effect and leaving this um, uh, rust alone. So I'm selecting on the background. Now, well, you know, at this point we've got the clouds pretty much set the way we want to. and We have that one layer that we're not even using um, layer one there. We could probably go ahead and delete that and then merge the layers and okay. then throw some light on that and come the through. The light's applied to both the yeah, metal the and the rust. Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and delete the layer one by simply dragging it to the trash can. What they're talking about here, merging layers, is something that we haven't actually shown before. Before we before we do one thing, though, I hate, I hate to get off track just for a second. Let's go ahead and do a a little bit more adjustment on that. It's still a little bright orange. Let's let's make it a little bit more brownish. Drop the opacity uh, down. Not just the opacity, but um, the actual color itself is still a pretty bright, fiery type okay, let's orange. Let's see if we can. Yeah, as you I'm see there. Bump up the opacity back to where it was. There you go. And I'm going to drop the the uh, the lightness down. I'm just going to drop the brightness of that whole entire thing. Still red. I want to I want to adjust its color to get it more towards uh toward that burnt. Yeah, I want a brown instead of a bright orange. Okay. I'm going to leave my brightness contrast. <laughs> Sorry and about go that. Go back to edit image and do hue saturation. You know how Buzz can be. I can be so picky. That's right. Now we can actually adjust the color and find a color inside our hue by running around here and dropping the saturation down a little bit and trying to find oh, something that's yeah, in, in the reddish orange range. Yeah, even okay. something like that could yeah. be. And we can bump up the saturation a little bit so we can really see what we're doing here. And, of course, we can then there lighten we go. it. I can deal with something like that. There you go. Yeah, good. We'll say okay to that. Drop that opacity back down to where it was, and at least we see that splotchiness going on. Yeah. Cool? Okay. Now let's do the uh, merge of those layers. So you're talking about merging layers. What do, what do we mean when we... It kind of combines what's on each individual layer into more or less a flattened package if you think about layers being those clear sheets of 
transparency paper. Yeah, the little mm-hmm. transparency paper. If you can think about those as stacked sheets of paper and then just kind of melting them down into one, it all becomes kind of one image. I got you. We're going to take layer two and merge it with the background layer so that both of these become one. What's okay. the opacity at on that one? Sorry. 31% right take, now. Take it down to about 22 or so. Okay. Yeah, somewhere around there. Right around good. 20% there. Excellent. Okay. Buzz is happy. I'm happy. Because <laughs> when Buzz ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to click <laughs> on this. <laughs> Get that image so done, we have Kelly to live with. Okay. Uh, inside the options for the layers, we have merge down. Merge visible and flatten image. I'm going to choose merge down. And when it says merge down, it literally means from the layer that's selected down to the next layer below it. So cho- choosing merge down will combine both of those layers into one background layer. Awesome. So just to clarify one thing, though, if you had three other layers underneath where that background layer was, it would only merge down to the layer that's underneath it. It wouldn't merge all four of those layers, you just got the it. one directly underneath you it. You got it. It simply takes the one that's selected and merges it with the one right underneath it. Now, there are options for merging visible, which means everything that has the visibility turned on at that moment will become merged. So you can turn the visibility off on some layers and the visibility on on other layers, and only the ones that are visible will get merged, as well as flattening for uh, the final output. Gotcha. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about getting a little bit of lighting effect. Since this is an introduction to filters, we want to kind of show you some of them. Uh, Under renders, render, we have lighting effects. Let's open up that dialog box and see what we've got. Ooh. Okay, this one is a fun one. I'm going to try to set this back to more of a default location. What we can do is we can simulate the effect of maybe what a spotlight would look like on our image itself. Okay, We have all sorts of different light types from this drop-down menu. Or excuse me, um, we have direction, omni, and spotlight. What I was actually trying to go for was the style. Right now we're set on the default, which is one light. Uh, kind of a white light in the middle, but if you drop down the default, you can see we have a number of different types, including like a red, green, blue light, maybe some three lights that go down, um, triple spotlights that are crossed. You can play around with this a lot. Now, we can't go into everything about it, but I'm going to go ahead and go back to the default, and I'm going to change the perspective of my light by simply clicking on this one little vector line here at the end and dragging it around to the other side. As I move my vector in a little bit, the light gets more intense, and I can change that focal length of the spotlight. Okay, As I drag back out, it goes away a little bit, and bring it back in kind of to get an intense area. If you notice down there at the uh, bottom area, you see a little trash can. It's where you can also drag those lights and pretty much just throw them away. If you need to add a new light, you can click on the little light bulb there and and add a new light to the scene. Right. And you can see you have lots of options for the intensity to drop the intensity of the light that's actually going to be affecting our image, adding more to it, can change your focal length. You can even change things between matte and shiny to create a more metallic type surface or a more plastic surface. You can underexposure Uh, make things underexposed or overexposed. And there's just a ton of things to do in here. Texture channels, which we're not going to get into right now. But just to kind of give you an introduction. What's the shiny do for us? The shiny? Let's bump up the shiny. He really is. He's going to lead us down the uh, wrong path. We're going to go ahead and bump up the shiny all the way, just because uh, Buzz wants to see it. (laughs) We'll see what happens. Anything else we want to... Buzz is happy. (laughs) Goof with there, Buzz? Uh, I think he's going to see that word metallic here in a second and go for that, too. (laughs) I've anticipated you. There it is. All the way. 100%. 100%. Okay. All right. Do we want to go and widen the light up just a little bit more? Add more of a light to it there? Okay. Yeah. And doing this, yeah, there you go. We just got to be careful with that intensity that's going to kind of overdrive or give us a little bit. There we go. A little bit. Give us a little hot spot there 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 at the top. But when I hit OK, it might take a second but you'll see a light swash across your, your background layer, okay, simulating a, the, uh, a light. Very nice. I might add that rust layer looks mighty good. <laughs> it was a trick and a half to get that rust layer, but uh, it's looking <laughs> it nice It does now. look very nice. <laughs> okay. 
All right, what else can we do to this to make it a little bit more uh, broken up, a little bit more realistic? Well, this brush well, metal, let's get us some scratches. <laughs> Brush metal always With it have being to have rusty, scratches. I'm assuming that it's old, so I'd say I it I definitely guess in, needs scratches. In talking about the scratches, though, as I know you're about to start scratching it, mm-hmm. the, Scratch. uh, <laughs> the direction of the light plays a really important part. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Exactly. If, uh, if I'm going to create anything with a shadow, I've yeah. got to remember where my light source is originating from. That way I don't accidentally put the shadow going the wrong direction and uh, mess up my my illusion of a shadow and a light source. Uh, I think that's going to come into play here pretty soon, and that's why he's warning me. <laughs> Let me go ahead and start the um, trying to add some scratches with this. The two tools I'm going to use for this is the dodge and burn tool. It's fantastic for adding some scratches. The dodge tool will highlight an area, while the burn tool darkens an area, so I'm going to start with some highlights here. What I want to do is make sure that I've got a really small brush. Now, because it's such a small brush and we're going to be dealing with such a small area, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a couple times and use this dodge tool to kind of add some streaks. I'm going to bump the opacity uh, up a little bit so that I can see kind of the streaky area. Okay, it's a very small brush, so you might have to work with this a little bit. And over time, you can create some really cool streaks uh, or uh, scratches effects. But you try not to go completely with the grain. Try to break it up a little bit to make more of a natural look here. Okay. When you've created... I was just going to... Gump's over there just kind of looking kind of excited. Hey, Gump loves to do scratches. You know what? I'm going to hand this over to Gump because Gump has been I'm spent the last hour doing scratches. And you know what? He has gotten quite good. So I'm going to stand fine. up okay, okay. and move over and let Gump take the driver's chair. You know, I think they're just picking on me tonight. So you know what? Kelly, I'm going to hold your mic for you. I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to get rid of your scratches. You, you may do that. See, Ben, I can read expressions so Here well. Here they go. <laughs> Say goodbye to my little scratches. All right. I'm going to hold you got to admit, mic. Kelly, I did good there. I, I just saw Gump had that look on his face like somebody had run over his cat or something. And I was like, uh, I stole his best friend. He is the scratch master. I guess so. <laughs> well, they also said I was the scratch master. Oh, not the scratch master, the clone master. And we got into that, and that turned into a disaster. So <laughs> please bear with me on this. This may turn into a wreck, too. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm just creating kind of small scratches. You don't want it to look like it just went through an asteroid field and got all <laughs> tore up. Just a few small scratches. I'm actually going along with the grain, as Kelly had told you earlier. With some slight variations, of course. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to make it look um, too uniform because nothing in reality is actually uniform. You want to break it up as much as possible. Uh, in the industry, we call that dirtying an image up or dirtying something up break away from uniform. Of course, in the old day of like uh, 3D animation, people really liked to see the chrome ball on top of a checkerboard um, uh, floor or something, and it looked very clean. Now, today, w- nobody wants to see anything clean. We want to see things really dirty. And so when we do photorealistic uh, images, we want to see something that mimics the real world, break up that uniformity a little bit more. So now that's the effect that we're going Now for. I'm going to go for... Uh my burn tool. I just switched over to my burn tool here, and I'm actually going to zoom in on an area because I, I like to work nice and close to my little scratch area. That becomes a little hard to see, but you can still see your scratch area there. And, and what you're doing right here, this is what's really important, is making sure you understand the direction your light's coming from because that's the side that you want this uh, this burned area to be on. Isn't that right there, uh, that's right. Gumpy? I can hit my uh, space bar here and scroll around the scene and try to find more of my scratch marks. Now, of course, I don't know where I put them, (laughs) so I'm going to go hunt them down. But as you can see, that really begins to look like a scratch mark. Sure does. It looks like somebody's dented that area in. So let's zoom back in and do some more scratch marks. Now, a few minutes ago, I was playing with this and got really in-depth. So if I uh, start having too much fun, you guys just slap you. be sure to holler. Slap you? Well, you know, you already beat me up with the eye and all that. No, that was you sticking your own (laughs) Excedrin-covered finger into your eye. (laughs) 
Not very ingenious, I might add. No, we swallow the aspirin. We don't stick it in our eye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they said take it. Get it in your body any way you can. <laughs> now, this is a good demonstration of how much time is actually wow. involved to create some of these uh, Photoshop images. You're going to spend a lot of time. Of course, we're constrained uh, by time for these to doing these VTMs, but you aren't. You're constrained only by the... Uh, by your own imagination. So the more time you spend, of course, the better your final product's going to be. So Gump is having a wonderful time with these scratches. <laughs> and I know it's getting a little boring, guys, but like I said, I'd rather it so make it though. look nice instead of kind of corny like my... Um, like your associate? Well, like my little clone tool thing turned out. I really <laughs> feel bad about that. <laughs> I've been picked on all night about that, so I just want you folks to know that hopefully you did get something... Oh, certainly. And, certainly. of course, uh, you know, something to think about is the the darker that you do this burn, what's that going to do? Well, I'm making two passes, as you see. If I were just to make one, you can really tell the difference between the one pass and the two pass. Where I've done the two passes, it really makes that scratch look a little deeper. deeper. Yeah. If I just did the one pass, it doesn't – actually, it doesn't really look like a scratch to me. It just kind of looks like somebody ran by with a Sharpie and – <laughs> gave it a little smudge, so that's because one of your eyes is bad. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's just my left you're eye. Not you're not processing. You're not processing the illusion of 3D anymore. So, do you guys want to? Let me throw some text on here as well. Does that look? Uh, yeah. You sure. know what? Since like you're in there, go for metal? it. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go for it. All right. Well, I am going to choose, which Kelly had told you folks about earlier, the horizontal type mask tool. Of course, you know you can find that in the uh, text area here. There's horizontal type tool, the vertical type tool. I'm going to choose the horizontal type mask tool because I do want my text to go horizontally um, and not vertically. If you did want it to go vertically, you could choose the vertical tool. This does make a selection, as Kelly's told you previously, and believe it or not, I can spell 3D buzz. He's doing better than I am. It Look took him a while, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a little slow. <laughs> so now we really just have the selection of 3D Buzz. It's not really written text or anything. It's just the mask of 3D Buzz. I'm going to hit Control-J on my keyboard. What's that going to do? It's going to jump it to a new layer. In essence, it creates a new layer of what's inside that particular selection. Certainly. So it's you look over here. Cut, copy, and paste, but Right. If you look you. over here to my right, I'll go ahead and rename this layer to the 3D buzz layer. So now we have 3D buzz here, and of course if I control click on it, you're going to be able to see exactly where the 3D buzz is at there. I'm going to click off of that, and we're going to add a hue saturation. We're not going to actually add any color to this, nor are we going to try to pull any color out or add color to we actually want to mess around with the lightness of the 3D buzz. Just kind of darken it just a little bit. You'll see where we're going with this here in a minute. So I've darkened it a little bit by going to Hue Saturation out of the Image Adjust menu over here to my left. And I was at Hue Saturation to lower that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to this little F here. Click on it and go to Inner Shadow. It's going to create a inner shadow for the 3D Buzz little logo that we have going there. And I think this is where Buzz was referring to. We have to watch our shadow so that we make sure that it's going the same direction as our light source is in this image. Since we have the light source coming in from the upper left-hand corner, we have to continue on with that and make sure that our shadow, if it has this burnt-in look, has a shadow that's also going from the upper left-hand corner down to the lower right-hand corner. So you can see all our shadows are actually pretty much going the same yeah. way with our light. Here we are on the left of our um, little light line that we created with the Dodge tool and with the 3D Buzz little logo there. We have our little shadow coming from the uh, upper left area as well. Actually, the um, defaults of that look pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK, but I will run through the defaults with you real fast. The blend mode was set to multiply. The opacity was set to 75%. We chose an angle of 120 because that's where our light was coming from. If I needed to move that around a little bit more to help that out, I could just do so by changing the angle right there. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and voila, there you have it. We've got that burnt in nice. look again. Now, um, last time, uh, real quick, just to, I guess, yeah, Gump, if you want to let uh, 
Or just hang out there. Did I think Kel uh, Master hop in there. Kelly's driving now, folks. So now, uh, yeah. Kelly, if we wanted to take this and all right, we've we've got the little silver metal thing going here. Now, what if we wanted to make it look like, you know, some sort of rather colorized metal or uh, wood? You did a neat little thing earlier where you did some knots in the wood. Um, okay. Again, you know, a little bit more with filters, maybe uh, messing with the color a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, the same basis, adding the noise and then motion blurring it, is a way that we can create brush metal. But doing the same steps, we uh -huh. can create a wood grain look as well. Cool. In order to create a wood grain, now this is actually what we did to the background with these uh, this blotchy look. This is going to look really good with uh, wood grain as well. What I can do is I can introduce color into this kind of this gray, bl black and white by going up to the image adjust and yeah once again we're using hue and saturation we just can't get enough of it well I'm this time we're actually going to change the colors though and not just play but with the now yes. when you right? start adjusting this it does depend on what layer buzz is motioning me back down to the background layer i was about to do this to the 3d buzz layer but i actually want to make sure that i'm on the background layer but now if we wanted to do them to both at the same time you could link we, the layers. Well, is that correct? We would have to, if we wanted to do them both at the same time. We remember, we an can use a, an adjustment layer yep. and create it oh, above right. the first one. We could either apply a hue saturation to to individual layers and actually change their uh, their pixel values, their colors, or we can create an adjustment layer above the 3D buzz. And now we keep the layers intact but yet we can do something like add color to it. Now, of course, we have our hue, saturation, and lightness. We've seen how that works. But over here in the, uh, the side of this, we have a box that says Colorize. Clicking on this literally takes all the color, strips it out, and now we only can deal with kind of like a duotone color. Okay, but we can change the hue around to kind of a, a, a brown so that we want wood, Maybe bump the saturation a little bit. That looks really cool. Does that look good for um, for wood? Yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't take much. But no. you can kind of change to a more of a red for a I don't know a, a deeper rich wood and light for a kind of a pine wood. So you've got all sorts of um, uh, different types of woods which have different type of color. But using That's that good. colorize is also a way that you can take a 3D image and turn it into a duotone image and kind of play with the uh, the color of it. So I'm going to say OK to that. Now, with that adjustment layer, it would color everything below it. Everything so below it. So can you drag that adjustment layer between the 3D buzz layer and the background layer and so it just affect the background layer? So that we can keep that 3D buzz, kind of that silver look, right. and only affect the background layer? Right. Sure, we can do that. Click hold, drag down. Now the 3D oh buzz yeah. stays that really cool brushed metal look while the background layer has this new brown. Gumpy? Cool. Were we sleeping during the uh, layers? Uh, Looks lesson? pretty nice. <laughs> um, was that where I was dealing with my eye? No. no. That was text. <laughs> Maybe I was sleeping during the layers <laughs> lesson there. Now this is kind of, uh, if you wanted to create a wood grain, we might actually use longer streaks for wood, but if you wanted the wood effect uh, you know, it's kind of fun. We can throw a knot into our wood. All we need to do is create a round selection area, kind of lo locate it where we want. Try not to get too perfectly circle. Uh, kind of locate that where we want and go up to the filter menu again. And this time, come down to the distort. Now we have all sorts of filters, but we can only show you a few at this time. I'm going to come down to the twirl filter, open that up. And once again, I have to remember which layer I'm on. So I'm going to cancel that, go select my background layer, <laughs> and try that again. Okay? I'm going to go down to my distort and twirl, now that I'm on the, the correct layer, and see what I get. The angle here, as if I adjust it, will take from uh, actually twirl the pixels inside that selection area. So at a very low amount, we get little twirl. I'm going to bump that up and look in my preview. It's kind of like a, a knot on wood. Okay, and I'm going to say OK. So what I get is kind of a little knotty area. <laughs> knotty little area that it is. <laughs> and try to create that a couple more times. And remember that twirl was the last filter I used, so I can easily just choose Control F on my keyboard to recreate that look with the same settings in a new place. So there you go. You can do that 
all over the place. So it's it doesn't give you you know absolute, but it is a good first step. Okay, go. Looks pretty cool. I like it. All right. Well, I I think that pretty much does what we were looking to achieve in this section right here, and that's just basically introduce our viewers out there uh, to filters. Just apply a few of the filters, and in this next section now, when you guys start applying a few more of them, everybody should feel comfortable with understanding that basically what you're doing are, you know, different types of effects that are going to affect the pixels, the selection, or the entire level or layer, excuse me, uh, with whatever type of filter you're applying. Correct. Okay. Correct. So with that, that does it for this section. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.